Later, I've been a caricaturist now for nearly 20 years. I started in New York in 1993. I draw caricatures for tourists and for visitors to York, generally speaking, and also I work at events and, and wedding receptions and business receptions and so on. Since leaving school, I didn't go into art. I never enjoyed art at school. So I never did it for all level. So I left school, just went into into an office job. But I always had a, I always had a desire to try and do something with me, with the art, with the caricatures. But I didn't, I didn't really think it would be practical to make a living out of it. I, I wasn't sure I'd be able to make a living out of it. But about 20 years ago, I I was unemployed, so I thought oh, I might as well try it. I came to York and I thought this is great. Everybody was in a good mood. It was a lovely atmosphere, so I thought, well, I'll try and do it here. So I got I got onto the council to see if there was any chance of getting a street trader's licence. A couple of months later, they rang up and said, one's come free. So that's when I got my stall in York, and uh, I've had it ever since. So it's a lovely place to work in York. <clears throat> the atmosphere, the, always, there's always an, a good atmosphere in York. The buildings, the history of it, people love just, people just love being here, don't they? And that's what makes it a good place for me to work. Well, I suppose um, over the years it's got to a bit of a fine art setting up a stall because there's so much of you can see to bring. But it's just a case of making it secure, to tie it so that in case it's windy. Also, making sure people can't trip over things as well. But what I do is I try to have people that are known. I have one or two that are known internationally, like Mr Bean, for example. Everybody in the world, or every country in the world, Mr Bean seems to be known there, so I put him up. And um, currently in our country, The Apprentice is on the TV, so he's quite well known. Even kids seem to know him at the moment. So, And he's such a good face to do as well, such a big character. And I also like to show the people that can have more than one on the page as well. I use any available space basically. I even got one on my drawing board in case people are walking past. Do I like the slide There are a variety of reactions, rating from joy. Some people really love it. So slightly less ones, but it's still a laugh, but a bit, little bit reserved. <laughs> That's oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought you'd be good looking in there. <laughs> then it goes down to a smile and eye. Oh, are you ready? How's <laughs> <laughs> oh, that look? Very, very few people really don't like them. They wouldn't have it done. They knew. They know it's going to be a bit of fun. The nose. I didn't know the nose. I didn't know I had this bit on the front. But... <laughs> there you go. There you go. And I got hair on this, was not it? Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit at the top. Really. Yeah, generous with the hair. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah. And what about so it can? What do you think of that? It's lovely. You even got your. Yeah, even my yeah. little yeah. detail. Yeah, yeah. It's it's these little details that make a Very big difference. Good. Yes, Very thank good. you. I've always done things fairly quickly. It's not that I'm trying to do them quick, but they just that's the natural speed to do them. I don't use many lines. In fact, to me, the, the fewer the lines I use, the better. The best ones I that give me the most satisfaction are the ones that just do two or three lines, and it gets a lightness. If you can get that, that's, that's very satisfying. My worst days, I've done absolutely nothing. So, they're the worst days. 
Especially if the weather's been really terrible as well. <laughs> You've had to sit out in it all day. I usually wear about... On a day like this, five or six layers of clothes. If it gets to later in the month than in January, it can go down. Last year, it got to minus four or five. So, in that condition, I had to wear seven or eight layers. But even then, it was too cold. My hands were just too cold to work. And my ins insides didn't want to work because it was that cold. But, it comes to the course, I'm not the only one. All businesses are the same. And I, as I sit here, people bring me cups of tea all day as well, which is very nice. Thank you very much. Well, this is my grand studio. Well, mainly my garage. But this is the corner of the garage that my wife lets me use to draw and sometimes paint. So as you can see, it's all very well arranged in completely perfect order. Well, at least I know where everything is anyway, usually. And if I don't, I can usually dig through and find things eventually. But uh, yeah, I do occasionally paint, but not very often. I did do um, an acrylic abstract here once, which uh, which I really enjoyed doing. I used really good practice with colours, but as only me liked it, so it doesn't get shown to anybody. No, usually I use I still use the same pens. Um, I use waterproof inks, which are alcohol based. So they, they dry instantly virtually and they don't smudge after with rain or anything like that afterwards. Um, this is my main kind of marker that I use, flat chisel tip marker, which uh, helps me to get a variation in my line. So rather than just getting a, a straight line like this, you can get a bit of it. So this really does um, help you to bring your drawing alive. This is a book that I was asked to do some years ago because it was a book about celebrities and their first cars. And the problem for an author when he's doing a book such as that is to get photographs of everybody is difficult in itself and to get permission to use all the photographs. So they decided to get caricatures drawn of every celebrity in the book. This is one of Chris Tarrant, who used to um, at one time live in a mini outside a school when he was a teacher when he couldn't afford, I assume he couldn't afford a house. And that postman, um, I put my dad in it. <laughs> so, um, see, that's that's one. And my dad appears in another one as well, because he used to be a good one to draw me dad, with that, with that nose, you see. That was easy, because he had to draw his face in that one. I couldn't see his face in the photograph. That was the photograph they sent me. So I just did him with a car on his head. This is a man that professionally balances cars on his head. I was just on a wet day in, I think it was in, I think it was 1998, and she came and I was sitting drawing people under an umbrella, and then this beautiful young woman sits in the chair, smile lighting up the whole square. I thought, oh, this, uh, this girl's uh, quite nice. I was um, come to York for a weekend with a very good um, friend and her family, and we got to the top of the shambles and we um, stumbled upon Neil's stall and I thought his prices were very, very reasonable. Um, so anyway, I got my picture done and this is it. This is actually just a miniature version of the picture and I was absolutely delighted with it. In time we started to go out with each other and it led to getting married a year, a year later. A lot of people think caricature is simply a matter of making the big the nose bigger if you've got a big nose or big ears. And there is that in it, of course, but you can capture a likeness without exaggerating at all, actually. It's just the way you're simplifying the face. I do exaggerate things, but not usually in a, in a large way, unless the person has a face demands that and suggests it to me, which some do. But um, I'm trying to capture the essence of the person in a few lines. And it doesn't, you don't succeed all the time with that, but when you do, it's a lovely thing to do.